friends, it's the Megathesia Warrior. Here with another death battle reaction. I am, of course, joined by my great friend, Manano. Hi. And today we're watching Stitch vs. Rocket Raccoon. Oh, man. I'm I am excited really about this one. This one. Th this yeah, we have no... Go, go, it was go. somewhere in my top 100 most wanted. I, I never bothered to make a full top 100, but I've got, like, a ton of ideas I love. And this is one of them, so... I'm really excited for this one. Yeah, Apparently and... There's a new animator who's on this one, so... Oh. I actually saw on uh, Twitter, so... Yeah, I saw I saw that, too. I saw that, too. So, like, I'm really looking forward to see what see what that what they're going to cook. I mean, but, DJ uh, yeah. Chucky's first run-in was uh, Magneto versus Tetsuo, right? So... I don't know for certain. But I'll, I'll, also, uh, if you're wondering why I didn't react to Miska versus uh, Killua... Uh, that 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 is reasons. I I I was just I was watching it with my brother before he went off to do more military training. He he was back for he was back for ten days. So I I I, need, I needed to watch one death battle with him, my guys. Okay, I I needed that. Yeah, I I, I watched it with another one of my friends. So yeah. yeah. But now we're back to our regularly scheduled reactions. So all right, ready? Minato, whenever you're ready. Ready when you are. Hell yeah, let's go! This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp and Mint Mobile. The banter on this better be great. <laughs> Hopefully. That's my main hope for this episode. Stitch, Disney's extraordinary experiment 626. Rocket, Marvel's murderous mercenary mustelid. Those are like I mean, technically both of them are Disney. Raccoons! You know, because he's a... Uh, just because you're cute and fluffy doesn't mean you aren't the deadliest thing in the universe. He's Wiz and I'm Boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. In the distant reaches of outer space, the mad scientist Jumbo Jukiba was accused of illegal genetic experimentation. He took the galaxy's most fearsome, most dangerous, most absolutely purely black-hearted evil creatures and smushed them all together. A great man with a vision, persecuted by spineless know-nothing bureaucrats. The result? Experiment 626, though you can just call him Stitch. He did not! I think I'm gonna be sick. <laughs> so <laughs> naughty. <laughs> After being slated for termination, Stitch escapes to a distant planet, ER. Oh, wait, Earth. Crash landing in the Hawaiian island of Kauai, of all places. There, he'd be adopted by the Earth girl Lilo and went incognito as the ugliest dog ever. <laughs> and despite his horrific upbringing, <laughs> Stitch found he had a softer side, a love of Elvis, and a kinship with Lilo, a devil child who didn't fit in, just like him. It wasn't long before Stitch was ready to do anything to protect his new Ohana from the alien threats coming to get him. And let me tell you, as a fellow mad scientist, Jumbo really outdid himself here. I've been meaning to dig deeper into Stitch's piecemeal alien biology for years. First of all, his fluffy exterior is entirely bulletproof, fireproof, and nearly impenetrable. Oh, this comes with a catch. His molecular structure is so dense, he can't swim. They said Sucks nearly indestructible, I will point Stitch out. Stitch can crawl on walls, hear yeah, a whisper from miles away, and scream so loud he'll blow you to kingdom come. He's strong enough to lift 3,000 times his own body weight and can spin dash so fast he'll burn burst into flames. His eyesight is also incredible. He's got night, x-ray, and infrared vision, and can even zoom in hundreds of times over. Even better, he can hop loogies like a friggin' machine gun. His spit is conductive enough to short-circuit electronics, stick objects together like glue, and even dissolve solid rock. Oh, and he's somehow a genius, too. The dude knows molecular physics and can build entire mech suits and spaceships out of junk in seconds. You wouldn't think it from his everything, but Stitch is a genius with a brain comparable to a supercomputer. The world's most powerful supercomputer right now is Hewlett Packard's Frontier, which can make one quintillion calculations a second. Comparing Stitch to Frontier huh. is frankly a massive lowball. See, Stitch was programmed to have Jumba's own intelligence, and Jumba's IQ has been compared to that of an entire galaxy combined. 
I have conducted my own genetic analysis to determine Stitch's alien progenitors. His DNA includes traces of the Manglioid of Meridian 4, the Goo Goblin Booger Beast, the People Eating Pus Monkey, the Deadly Disemboweler, the Boiling Tongueoid, and the Bottom Feeding Scum Sucker. It <laughs> sounds like uh, your ex wife. Lineup. <laughs> Am I right? No, Wiz. What the hell? That's such a messed up thing to say about her. Be better. I'm so disappointed in you. You can make those jokes when you start paying the alimony. Uh, well, Stitch's incredible buffet of alien DNA is supported by a power cell embedded in his body, fueled by the energy of two colliding planets. Huh? Colliding planets! Uh, are, are, are you coming back? No? F you! Okay. He's got a jetpack, freeze ray, grenades, and a Seismotronic 200, which can make sandwiches gigantic! Oh, and shrink enemies, that's, that's cool too. Stitch was a one-fluff army, and he proved it when everyone from the Galactic Federation to the dastardly Dr. Hamsterville came to pick a fight with him. Including all of Jumba's experiments. Yeah, 626 isn't just some random number. There are hundreds of these little bastards running around. More troublemaking cousins to add to his growing Ohana. Though he had to pacify many of them first, like Slushy, who can create a snowstorm that covered all of Kauai. Or Richter, who can split the Earth in half and shoot Shatter planet busting asteroids. And Jumba stated that Stitch was the most destructive, unstoppable monster the universe has ever seen. Even more dangerous than Holio, who can create a black hole large enough to consume the entire universe. Speaking of black holes, in the anime, yeah. yes, there's a Lilo and Stitch anime. Stitch once piloted a ship carrying a supernova bomb strong enough to wipe out a galaxy and flew it into a black hole. It and the black hole both exploded on top of him, and he popped out no worse for the wear. You know, like like you do. Another time, he uh, piloted a ship to a different black hole in less than two minutes. It's unclear exactly how far this was, but the average distance between stars is about five light years. That means his ship would have had to have been flying at over one million times the speed of light. All right, one million. Filled with love okay. for Zohana, okay. the power cell inside Stitch surges incalculably. He used this to defeat Dark End, an experiment explicitly made to be stronger than Stitch, who had just defeated four Stitch clones on his own. And Stitch completely annihilated him! He knocked Dark End into outer space so hard he dislodged a city-sized space station. You know, like you do! He's even managed to worm his way into completely different Disney properties. Oh god, we don't have another Deadpool on our hands, do we? With Stitch around, <laughs> Lilo, Nani, and the inhabitants of Earth couldn't be safer. Surf's up for everyone's favorite blue fuzzball of death. Okay, this so that was a lot to take in. Help. That was it a lot to take in. It can be easy to spend in. all your time on your work, your friends, your family. Million. But how much time do you actually now, spend yeah. on yourself? I'm, I'm be Therapy can be an incredible sleep, asset to your mental health, even if you don't think you need it right at this moment. A lot of definitely. these problems can be hard to spot without self-reflection right. and outside perspective. It's easy to accept things the way they are without realizing that maybe they could be better. Everyone can benefit from becoming the best version of themselves. Positive coping skills, setting boundaries, supporting others without leaving yourself all incredibly and how fast important to practice is. in your journey for self-fulfillment. And in this super busy world, BetterHelp is entirely online and designed to be flexible to your schedule. All you have to do to start is fill out a brief questionnaire to be matched with a licensed therapist. And if you'd like to make a change, you can switch therapists at any time at no additional charge. Find more balance with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash DeathBattle today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash death battle. All right, here we go. Somewhere in the Black Mountain Hills of Dakota, there was a young boy named Rocky Raccoon. Rocket, Raccoon, Rocket, not Rocky. That's the Beatles song he's named after. Well, I have wasted a lot of time on some very specific research. In fact, it's just Rocket. Despite his startling resemblance to the resourceful dumpster diving mammal, Rocket originates from the alien planet Halfworld, which served as an asylum for the criminally insane ruled Did over you know by that, alien like, humanoids. That Along with many of Halfworld's cutesy inhabitants, Rocket was subjected to cybernetic modifications by his Raccoons overlord, are all with the purpose of being Halfworld's like warden. Rain oh, damn. Rockets. Rocket's mutations make him smarter, stronger, you know, that's not surprising faster, somehow. and tougher than your average garbage goblin. His cybernetic skeleton is connected to artificial vertebrae and and neural implants, allowing him to dodge gunfire and laser beams, survive an explosion the size of a city block, and keep up with supervillains like Craven and Venom. 
alongside pals Lila the Otter and Walrus the... Yeah. Rocket battled the mercenary Blackjack O'Hare and Killer Clowns and saved the day time and time again. I bet you're wondering what the hell this has to do with Guardians of the Galaxy. In a convoluted editorial effort to reboot his character, Rocket left Half-World to become a mercenary and had his memories suppressed. After a betrayal by his otter lover, a different one, he has a thing for otters, Rocket was sent to jail. Space jail. And prison changes a man. Gun was the Saturday morning cartoon character of yore. He was a felon, cynical and hardened <laughs> by the criminal justice system. The space criminal justice system. Rocket suffered not only from his penal servitude, but the trauma of his brutal genetic modifications and a lingering sense of alienation. It was in this personal hell where he'd meet a bunch of a-holes who would soon be his new teammates. Star-Lord, Gamora, Drax, and of course, his best pal Groot. And together they were the Guardians of the Galaxy, defending the free peoples of the cosmos from all manner of alien menace. For a price, of course. Though unlike some of the powerhouses on his team, Rocket's raccoon body is- I told you he's not a raccoon, he was created on Half-World and is the last of an entire race of raccoon-like aliens. He just happens to look like an Earth raccoon. Don't lecture me on raccoons, Wiz! I'm an expert, been fighting the bastards for years. Did you know their tiny little bandit masks are for reducing glare to enhance night vision? They can hear noises as quiet as earthworms digging underground, and about two-thirds of the sensory perception part of their oh, cerebral cortex- Oh, I love cortex that video! This is, a, this is amazing. This is amazing. This is everything I wanted in a death a battle. Stealthy glass cannon like Rocket. Yeah, cuz he's a raccoon. As I was saying, Rocket became the team's resident grease monkey, specializing in all things technology and engineering. And fittingly, his specialty in combat is firearms. Yeah, that sounds like my cue, Wiz. Rocket's built giant mix, cobbled together random junk for an improvised flamethrower, and casually slapped together a bomb strong enough to destroy a moon. Oh, and he's got every kind of hand cannon imaginable. Pistols, machine guns, miniguns, rifles, rocket launchers, plasma guns, laser guns, and my favorite, the melon popper, where melon means head and pop means... Kabam. That melon belonged to a Super Scroll, one of the deadliest warriors in the Marvel Universe. With the combined abilities of the Fantastic Four, including the Thing, who survived a blast from the Power Cosmic that could split a planet in two. Yeah, Rocket's weapons are crazy, like the Rampart Armed Phasic Cannon, which utilizes cold fusion and could melt the face off the Mad Titan himself, Thanos. The same Thanos who is strong enough to survive a supermassive black hole four light years across, and came out with only light scratches. The Okay, so about the same endurability. And beyond, like Thor, Hulk, and Odin. If Thanos can walk through attacks from a dude who can shake the multiverse, and Rocket's guns oh, can hurt him, no. I'm gonna need one of those puppies under oh, no. And similar weaponry to what Rockets use can operate Rocket down to might the picosecond, now. which is one trillionth yeah. of a second. He can access all of these goodies at any time from his orbital stash, a remote-controlled satellite that'll deliver anything he wants lickety split. Rocket can zoom through the sky on his rocket skates, project force fields, teleport with a portable AI, melt through solid metal with acid, and even hack foreign technology. Anything from a prison to a planet to an entire galactic empire, Rocket's the most dangerous not raccoon who's totally a raccoon in the whole universe. And he's proven it with the Guardians. He's saved Earth at least 11 times, cured Ego the living planet of a lice infestation, and held his own against an entire world trying to kill him all at once. He even devised a plan that ultimately stopped Dormammu. The Lord of the Friggin' Dark Dimension! No wonder Star-Lord called Rocket the greatest tactical mind he's ever met, even if sometimes he has a tendency to run in guns blazing. Though he'd always be a wisecracking son of a bitch, his time with the Guardians softened his edges. He learned to enjoy life again, and even made it back to Half-World to send that bastard Blackjack O'Hare packing. And even though he clearly is one, whatever you do, don't call him a raccoon, cause there's nowhere in the galaxy to hide from this gun-toting mother Flarker. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna lean towards Stitch. I'm I'm rooting and betting Stitch. Alright, here we go. Alright, the combatants are set and we've run the data through all possibilities. It's time, time for a death, death battle. battle! I'm a little nervous, but I, I think Stitch might take it. Yeah. Alright. Not the ice cream! You smashed my ship, Flogface! 
This is great. He's about to get impaled. Yup. Oh, damn! There goes Rocket. GG. It was finally able to be enjoyed. No brutally murdering ice cream guy wasn't necessary, Wiz, but I felt it was an artful touch. Though similar in many ways, Stitch and God. Rocket's fighting styles were polar opposites. You can never catch a break. Was strong enough to tear Rocket apart physically, while Rocket's guns were powerful enough to kill people even stronger than Stitch. So the question was simple: if both of them only needed one hit to win, who would get the killing blow yep. first? It all came yep. down to speed. Exactly Rocket's what we thought. Lasers exactly. and his guns could operate down to the picosecond. One trillionth of a second. But Stitch's supercomputer brain could operate down to the quintillionth of a second, a million times faster, at minimum. And his ability to pilot that ship at over a million times the speed of light meant that he more than had the reaction speed to dodge anything. Yeah, rocket like, I, like I thought. Tactical brilliance meant he could keep Stitch at bay with tricks for a while, but he couldn't reliably seal the deal. Despite being a little blue goblin, Stitch usually stays level headed in a fight, whereas Rocket can be way more impulsive. And frankly, Stitch. Stitch is probably even smarter, considering he has the combined IQ of an entire galaxy. One slip up from Rocket is all Stitch would need to end the fight. Rocket's arsenal was absolutely bonkers, to be sure, but Stitch's superior speed, physical strength, and unbelievable intelligence gave him the win. Looks like this Rocket's blasting off again! The winner is... <laughs> Let's go, baby! <laughs> The winner is Stitch. <laughs> oh, that's cute. <laughs> I, I like that he broke in at the end. Thanks for watching. Yeah. Okay, we'll call him next time. We're releasing every no clue. And click the join button to get new perks and extra content. Planet level members even see death. I never know. Else, so don't miss happy. out. All right, let's see. Oh yes! yes! Let's go! Oh, holy yes! shit! Let's freaking. Oh my god, I was not expecting this! They said it wouldn't happen! They said it wouldn't happen! I mean, I... I I'm surprised! Let's oh, damn. go! Oh, oh man, yes! It's finally... That has to be SFM, that has to be SFM, team. I'm, I'm, Darth Vader is one of my most wanted runbacks, and I was hoping he would fight either Obito... 
or Mirak from Skyrim. Dude, I've wanted Death Vader. I mean, Darth Vader back for so long, ever since he got smoked by Doctor Doom. Uh, so I guess that the Yin Yang Orb really is Vader versus Obito. I mean, it could yeah, also I be the the half light Liu the... Kang versus Jago. I mean, it still could be the half light, half dark. So, uh, I still think that's gonna be Moon Knight versus Azrael. I, I, I don't know enough to debate otherwise. I'm, I'm going to be honest. So, uh, what did you think of the episode, dude? I loved it. I l absolutely adored it. I, th I thought the humor was great. Just the music was a my bop. my second favorite so far. Yeah, yeah. That one I was in sec. Agreed. It still doesn't quite stack up to. Uh, to one of my favorite episodes now. It's Dragonborn was a chosen that what friend. can top it. I have a close friend who's like a massive Dark Souls nerd, and like he, I showed this to him because he actually did say uh, he was actually betting on Chosen Undead, and said, "Well, he did personally disagree with the verdict. He because of like uh, uh, Chosen Undead's respawning, he thinks he would like still like been able to uh, just outlast." Uh, la uh, last Dragonborn, since they were they were like right next to the fire. Uh, but he still says he thinks the episode was amazing. Yeah, yeah. Oh man, Darth Vader versus Obi so oh, I'm Darth Vader I'm all the way. I'm looking forward to this. Darth Vader all the way. Yeah, it's so it's so funny how people were saying that like the, it, it wouldn't happen because they already did Obi Wan versus Kakashi. And hey, on the bright side, this means that this means that uh, my third most wanted is still on the table. Hell yeah! Uh, Palpatine versus Xehanort. Please don't remind me. The Palpatine getting smoked by a by a universal level character is in, is incredibly depressing to me. It, it's funny because I'm pretty sure there was like some kind of statement about galaxy level, but I think either that was bunked or that was a bluff from Palp Palpatine. I don't remember the context behind that one. But, uh, yeah, pa even w if you take that fa face value and actually give Palpatine galaxy level, it, it, it he still loses. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Palpatine gets smoked ten ways to Sunday, but, like, then I mean, again, I'm not fair, exactly in a wait in a in a position of to talk because wanted matchups because Obito is about to, to get smoked ten ways to Sunday. Uh, let's see. I'm go I'm going to look through just through my top five alone. Uh, the, the closest one you have uh, uh, the closest one to being close is Kuro Dan versus Seto Kaiba from Yu Gi Oh, and like even then. Kaiba can just shut down uh, Kuroda's equipment with a crush card uh, virus, so he kind of yeah. hacks the dude to death. Unfortunate. I mean, I'm... Uh, uh, really then, quick, um, back, back to the episode, back to the episode. The, the, mo the moment the, th the Thanos gun didn't kill him immediately, yeah, I, I, I knew it was GG. For, for... Yeah, I kind of did too. Like... The that was the strongest weapon. He survived it. Yeah, yeah. That that that's just the that's just the point. That's probably like the one the thing the animation did wrong. That it that it was just an obvious. Oh, Stitch wins now. Yeah, I mean, I'm glad Stitch won though. Oh that, yeah, by all means, I'm I'm thrilled. I wonder I wonder who's gonna win Vader versus Obito though, because I, I know Vader's generally stronger, but from what I hear, apparently Obito's faster, and he has those uh, truth seeking orbs or whatever you call them. That that do actually get past Vader's durability. So Obito actually has better odds against Vader than Kakashi did with Obi Wan, since he actually has a way to get around uh, Vader's durability. So I'm looking forward to this. I'm rooting for Vader, but uh, yeah, it's kind. It, it, there's been a <laughs> some of the matchups lately have been a lot less predictable than usual. Well, aside from. Killua versus Misaka and Chosen Undead versus Last Dragonborn, but I mean, hey, to be fair, that that one was that one was uh, five is actually really good compared to like most season lineups. Yeah, but yeah, okay, so that that will do it for I think I think that's a good place to end on. That'll do it for this episode. Fantastic episode, absolutely loved it. 
Uh, original video will be in the description. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And uh, Minato, you have any closing words? Uh, I hope X versus Primal happens this season. All right. With that, I will see you all in the next video. See ya!